Friends, tonight, your voices were finally heard. The voices of working families, parents, taxpayers, law enforcement, and everyday citizens. Voices from the farms, the suburbs, the city of Chicago, <laughs> and every place in between. Let's hear it up for Chicago tonight. We got anybody here? Uh huh. Right there's how it's going in Chicago. God bless you. Wow. Thank you. This is awesome. Oh, tonight our movement sent a clear message to the establishment and the political elites. We will not be ignored. This primary has been a long journey, but one that we believe is worth every second, every mile, every moment. It's been an amazing journey on this campaign trail. We've driven hundreds of thousands of miles. I got a vehicle at the Ford place just down the road and I can prove it. <laughs> oh, we've listened to thousands of stories from everyday Illinoisans who are looking for leadership that will actually help them live, work, and thrive in Illinois again. We live in disparate times. It's a journey that I could not have traveled without the help of God my loving wife, Cindy. My amazing family. Our thousands of volunteers and supporters all across this state. Our staff and all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cindy and I cannot thank you enough for the support that you've continued to give me and our movement to help clean up Springfield and restore Illinois. That's been the battle cry from the beginning. Now, I do want to take a moment to thank Gary Rabine, Richard Irvin, Jesse Sullivan, Paul Schimpf, and Max Solomon for their efforts during this campaign. I've heard from a few of them already and they have pledged to unite with us to fire Pritzker. Now is the, now is the time to unite and move forward and we will do that, friends. We believe in this movement. We believe in the people of Illinois, and together we will get Illinois back on track. It will happen, friends. <laughs> Illinois is our home. This election is about our future, and this campaign is our fight. Friends, if you'd asked me six years ago if I would ever run for state office, many of you already know what that answer would have been. It was a resounding no. I would have called you crazy. Absolutely not. I wasn't very fond of state politics, and I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. I loved my quiet life on the farm, working with my hands, volunteering in my community, and spending time with my family. I never dreamed that I'd be running for state office. But on July 4th, 2017, that all changed. My state representative at the time started voting for tax increases on working families. I stayed, started to share the truth on Facebook. Thought it was kind of fun to start complaining that way, but look where it got me. <laughs> be careful when you complain on Facebook. And many of you out here today, many of our friends began to encourage us to run. So my family and I prayed about it. And eventually I jumped into the race. We were outspent, but we were not outworked. And we won. <laughs> the 
throughout this campaign, people have referred to me as a downstate farmer. <laughs> And you know what? They're right. <laughs> I'm proud to be a family farmer. And I love to remind people what farmers do. They feed the world. Thank you. We get up before the sun comes up. And often we work until after it goes down. And that's certainly the kind of work ethic we're going to need to get Springfield back on track. We fix things that are broken. We solve problems. And we grow things. And as a matter of fact, over 250 years ago, it was a group of farmers who founded and grew the greatest country on the face of this earth. And I think they did a pretty good job. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be the son of the great state of Illinois. But we're all here because we know that Illinois is in trouble. Decade after decade of mismanagement in Springfield, back-to-back -back billionaire governors who don't understand the struggles of working people, and where has that gotten us? Nowhere. People and businesses leaving Illinois in droves, looking for work, affordable housing, lower taxes, and better opportunities. They're leaving, they're leaving because Springfield and the political elites have failed every one of us. And now the elites and the press say that Pritzker's a shoe-in. <laughs> you get it. They say our fate's set. That a farmer can't beat a billionaire. Friends, the funny thing is, these same people said that we couldn't win the primary. We were outspent by tens of millions of dollars in the primary. And look what happened tonight. This is how it's done. <laughs> Our movement is growing. When people show up in November, like you showed up tonight, we will win.